All right, now we're going to look at Angular. Momentum. And actually, we're going to talk a little bit about regular momentum at the same time. So, linear momentum, P, is equal to MV. <clears throat> and it's important that we say that momentum is conserved when our net outside force is equal to zero. So we say that momentum is conserved when the net force acting on the system is equal to zero. Nothing is nailing anything down, and it's always conserved. Angular momentum, L, is equal to I omega. Angular momentum is conserved when our net outside torque is equal to zero. So with, with linear momentum, we can say that the change in linear momentum with respect to time <laughs> is equal to um, outside force. And so that when the outside force is zero, there's no change in that in respect to time. And the same thing with this. The angular momentum with respect to time is equal to torque. When there's no outside torque, so there's no change in angular momentum. And that's what we're looking for. So um, let's say we take just two point masses at the end of a stick. We throw another mass towards it. There are two ways at looking at this. If the system is completely free, then we have to look at it in terms of um, linear momentum and say that mv here is equal to, sorry, m, mv plus 2m times its initial velocity of 0 is equal to, let's say they all stick together, 3m times the final velocity. This would be how we would find the <clears throat> linear momentum afterwards. At the same time, though, we're going to also have a conservation of angular momentum. It's a little bit complicated to look at it, um, but we need to look at the angular momentum of this object, which we'll actually talk about in the next slide, and then the angular momentum of this one. So we have L initial here is still equal to the L final over here, but both of these can happen simultaneously. And this one tells me about the center of mass of my object. So if the center of mass is moving forward beforehand, it has to be moving forward afterwards. Part of the conservation of um, linear momentum is that the center of mass moves the same, always. So if it's moving forward before, it has to be moving forward afterwards. But Afterwards, it's going to be spinning about its center of mass, but it's still going to have velocity to look at. So let's get into actually calculating um, angular momentum. One of the toughest things I've found for students to deal with is the angular momentum of an object, let's say of mass m, it's moving with the speed v this way, about this point p. L at point P for this object, from some of our definitions of angular momentum, um, is R crossed with the regular momentum of the object. Now, what this cross product means is that the magnitude of my angular momentum is going to be RMV times the sine of the angle in between them. Or that when we calculate this, we are only concerned with the perpendicular components of everything. So let's say that this is moving on a along a line that is a distance of A from this. Now, 
looking at it, this has a momentum vector of mv in this direction. If this is r and this is our angle theta, let's look at some stuff. Now, something to consider right away is that all of the momentum here is not important. We have two components of momentum that are going to matter. We have the parallel component and the perpendicular component. We care about the perpendicular component. That is the truly important part of this entire thing. That perpendicular component is what's going to give me an angular momentum. So that perpendicular component Okay, if that's theta, then this is theta. So my perpendicular component, or mv perpendicular, is just mv times the sine of theta. So L here is going to be mvr times the sine of theta. Look at that big R. Now if we look at that, <clears throat> this is going to change positions. So theta and R are going to change every time, but this mvr sine theta was just doing for random, done for random drawing. It could have been in any point along the way. This R sine theta is always going to be equal to a constant value of A. So the angular momentum here is mv times a, or that straight line distance you know, between the closest part of the path um, and my pivot point. But it says something important. Angular momentum is constant for an object moving in a straight line. You need to know how to do this for every single angular momentum problem that you're going to run across, without exception. They all start by having something like a dart or a blob with mass m moving with the velocity this way. Let's say it's just towards a wheel that's fixed at a point in the center. And it's going to hit it here at an angle of theta, where you have radius r. <clears throat> so, if we're going to do this problem, we need the angular momentum beforehand, which depends on this distance, so it's r times the sine of theta. So if we say L initial equals L final, it's mv r sine theta. If they give you that value, use that value, but you're always going to be interested in this distance okay, from my point of pivot. And then that's equal to, afterwards, once this thing sticks, let's say it's a disk, one-half mr squared, it's going to be one-half mr squared plus, if it sticks, mr squared. That's my i afterwards times the final angular momentum of the thing. And if we're after final angular momentum, we're going to need, we're going to need all that. So, mvr sine theta in this case would be 3 halves m r squared omega m goes up not omega squared m r squared just omega m goes away m goes away one of my r's goes away one of my r's stays the angular velocity of this thing afterwards the angular velocity of this thing afterwards is two-thirds um, v sine theta over r. It's also interesting to note that because this thing is pinned down, there's not going to be any linear momentum because that represents an outside force. Okay, these are things to think about with this, but this is the basics of angular momentum.